all bright and cheery and, and ready to this is gonna work take like. on the day. Yikes, it'd be. Ooh. Well, good morning. Yikes, yikes, yikes. I went and ran the hall, so I'm a little winded. Yeah, uh, she's a little winded. I forgot we had these little boop, boop, little did we peepers. Get these last year? I think we did. Oh, well, that's so scroll fun. back, but I'm pretty sure. I knew it might have been hanging on my lamp for like a year. I'm sure there'll be a Karen hopping on today going, Wah. Just let it scroll through. I stop. I stop. It is. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, No. Good morning. There you go. See? I can have rein it oh, in. I, I love all Karens. Karens, any name. Just any name. I love them all. Because yeah. you know why? Hmm. Well, we will talk about that later. But all right. this is fun. I like it. I like it too. Happy Good Friday, everybody. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Good to Friday. I totally forgot, right? I forgot till Quimmy said it's Good Friday, and I was like, man, I probably should have talked about Good Friday. Where's your walk with Christ? We're going to be Good Friday. It's a real important day. <laughs> anyway, no, it's so happy Good Friday, everybody. I know yeah. all the childrens are out of school. Um, out of school, school, school. Who's, uh, there's such excitement in the air right now, y'all. We are literally, if you are in this house, uh, right. we are. You are getting to be a part of new. Uh, just a, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word? Uh, yeah. Something we've never done. The no, biggest outreach new. slash service slash whatever you want to call it uh, we have ever embarked on. So we are breaking oh, new ground. What's that song? It's that song you don't sing anymore. Oh, New Wine. New Wine. Oh, I love We're that song. We're breaking new ground. But We're you know breaking what? new ground, and yeah. you guys, it, there's yeah, such anticipation in the air. I was thinking about it this morning, and I was like, God, this is amazing. Do you guys understand, like, how huge this is? Like, it's... Gigantic. It's huge. Like, that's exciting. Like, we are literally stepping out and doing something the church, this church has never done. Like, this, of this magnitude. And, you know, I know a lot of um, maybe possibly members that have been here a long time might, if you're in this place and you're thinking, what an inconvenience. It's, it's out of the tradition of what we normally do on an Easter. We have, you know, we all, we all dress up as a family in our nice bonnets and matching you could bring your like spring dresses, change your clothes and after, and go take a picture. Our suits, and then we have you our could. family portrait, and then we go have Easter lunch. You could do that. But we are literally breaking out of that. So it, it, it's we're breaking out of the comfort of the four walls of this church. We're breaking tradition. We're doing what Christ told us to do. The Great Commission. We're going out into the highways and the byways, and we're going outside the four walls of the church. So although we're, ma it's more, it's an, in if you view it as an inconvenience because it's out of the norm of what you and your family do on Easter, view it sad. as you're making yourself, uh, uh, not uncomfortable. We're inconveniencing ourselves and our comfort to bring the gospel and make it more convenient for people who need it. So you view it like that. We're making this convenient for people who need the gospel. And what better day to do that on than Easter, y'all? I mean, how amazing. Like, we're, it, I'm excited. Like, I just. I can tell. But I'm sorry. I'm like You're busting like a, at the seams. You I'm are, because like, I haven't had a word in edgewise since I got on here. I'm sorry. I'm just excited, y'all. It's huge. I'm excited, too. This is it's huge. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, I'm excited as well. You know, so people I just, working real hard to get it. Get it. It's gonna be good, right, Glenn? We're gonna be. What's that? We're gonna um, be my. No, we ain't singing Britney Spears. She needs. Jesus. Hopefully, she's out there. Oh, Maybe we should be yeah, out there. Lord, that just pray for the Britneys today. Um, we're gonna be a city without walls. We are. We are a church in the city, city and we are without hit. walls. We have a wall of fire protecting us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Think if my daddy was here. Oh my gosh, your this dad. This is like his would, vision. Yes. Like, oh my gosh. That's a thing two people have to realize. Oh, so much has changed. This was my dad's vision the mm -hmm. whole time, you guys. Mm -hmm. so nothing has changed. It is a nope. mantle that was picked up. Yep. And if he were here, I mean, he's looking yep. down going, that's the vision I had. Yep. And so those that I think heard that Pastor didn't know my Rodney dad very well. say one time that when his daughter went to heaven, he felt like she was up there pulling strings because mm -hmm. their ministry went to another level. Not that she had to 
Okay. Not that she had to die for that to happen, but they had a choice in that moment for that trauma to um, hinder them and get mm -hmm. stuck in their grief. Or they were like, uh-uh. They got a, what's a, a holy... Boldness? No, holy... What's that word? It's like holy, holy anger. anger. Indignation? Holy. Indignation. Is that what it is? I think so. Okay. Let probably me call them and all. And what'd you call Pastor? Pastor Rodney? Donica. Hi, by the way. Hey. So, anyway. She probably for sure didn't get me they got. They had that holy indignation rise up on the inside of them, and they were like, you know what, Lord, or Satan? You took our child. Uh, you, we want 100 souls. But even then, I think I heard her say that she, they said, we're, we're placing her on the altar. The devil's not taking her. We're, we're mm -hmm. you know, after she passed, like, you know what, mm -hmm. Lord? We dedicated her to you as a baby, and now she's with you, and now we're going to make the devil pay. Like, the devil's going to pay for this. Yeah, he's paying because she's yeah. in, like, a... I look at yeah. their ministry, but then I also look at um, uh, uh, Pastor Jonathan and Adala. Same thing. They went through something extremely traumatic of losing a child. Guess what? In that moment, they had a choice to make, and they same thing. They were like, you know what? The devil's going to pay full speed ahead and look at both of those ministries examples of mm -hmm. what the church is supposed to be doing and just the fruit well i feel like that's what's happening here like mm -hmm. the accelerator has been pushed to the floorboard because the kingdom is always advancing always and so we here we are embarking on the biggest outreach we have ever done so and you get to be a part of it on sunday Woo! A woohoo. It's very exciting. So, anyways, that's not what I was going to talk about today. I hate to. It's real. Are you on the phone? You are. Oh, the vet's calling me. Oh, man. Don't answer it. Oh, I'm not. She's probably calling to tell you what. You're, I don't one know. One of the dogs is behind on their pills. Probably. Her phone rang at one, during one of the services. I got two calls. In Tampa, and it was her vet. Two calls. She excused herself to answer it. Well, because they, they left a message about my older dog, and I left uh, him in the care of a great dog sitter, uh, Samara, and my friend Amber. And so they called me back to back, and I'm like, why are they calling me back to back? Mm -hmm. About it, you know, and so I was like, I better run out and answer or call him. And it was like, yeah, hi, we noticed your other two haven't been. I was like, you totally manipulated me. I was like, is he okay? He's my head, I'm all. like. He's what? on seizure medication. And I had text Samara and I text my friend Amber going, is, is Miko okay? Oh, yeah, he's great. I thought, they're at the vet. They didn't tell me. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know why they're calling me. Who knows? Hmm. But. Oh, let's say good morning. I didn't say good morning to anybody. I know. I'm sorry. I got excited and I got ahead of myself. Hello, Lyric. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, good morning, Elder Barbara. Barbara. Lyric, we love you. I miss you. Clemmy. Clemmy. Love Hello. that you're here. Um, oh, good morning, Miss Dawn. Rosa. Oh, Tony. Rosa. Tawn. Hello. Good morning, Tony. Uh, who else we got? Be good Friday. Emma, Hi, praying Emma for Frank. a quick healing for you. I know you just had surgery and we're praying. No, nope, quick... she's, she hadn't had it yet. Okay. I'll feel Sorry. You. No, she Pring. had not had surgery, okay. but she's in the hospital, and we're praying you get home quickly. Yes. I think quick it's, recovery, I think it's quick healing comes in, in Jesus' April. mighty name. Yeah. Emma, we pray for that. Um, um, good morning. Happy Good Friday. Sylvia, well, hello, love you. Sylvia. Good morning, Miss Donna. Love you. I'm praying for you as well. Um, good morning, Jay Gonzalez. What? Hello. Oh. oh. What if it's Jay? So I was just. I thought that Jay. too. Yeah, I can't. I need full names. Full, full names, people. Full names. Oh, I Good morning, Jay. We miss you. Jenny. You just listen. Jenny from the block. I love Hello. you. I love you. I just read about Jenny Jen, from the block this morning. Listen, I'm going to need you to change your Facebook profile picture. That always throws me off. What is it? Look at it. It's like a double, one of those double pictures. Do you have a knife in your hand? That's what it looks like, right? Oh, my God. Jennifer, <laughs> change that. <laughs> Come on, Jenny. Jenny, it looks like you're chopping off your head. <laughs> that looks so cool. Anyways. <laughs> but we love you. We love you. You bring us great joy you with your song. Let's see. Before we right. start, is there anything happening new for you? Any all good things? Tampa was awesome. It was great. Mm -hmm. So next Morning, year, Katrina. definitely try to come. Yeah, we'll try to work Katrina. harder at, or I mean, work harder, sorry. 
we'll try to organize better next year for all the ladies to, um, you know, we'll start planning more in advance. This year was just a different year, and the way that it fell, we kind of, we didn't, we didn't uh, push it, to, it we didn't advertise it as much. Um, we did have a smaller group go, but it, it was amazing. We all got refreshed and... Sorry you didn't get refreshed. <laughs> no, we brought uh, it back. We did. They we didn't. brought it back. You know what? We live a lifestyle of refreshing. You refresh your spirit mm -hmm. every day. Right. But yeah, it was it was great. So Right. Um, no, it was really good. We'll I got it quite a bit year. out of it. Um, Sister blessed me with a, a yeah. new Bible. Dr. Rodney's Bible. Well, it's not his Bible, Ooh. but it's his um, all of his notes and. Um, well, no, yeah, it is his Bible. Like he, I mean, it's the Holy Bible, of, but it's not like he wrote. Oh, it's extra goat in skin it. leather. This is goat skin, and the paper is made out of cotton. <laughs> no, I forget. It's made like out of it's it's like imported Italian paper. I don't know if, if that you've means, never felt it. It's like. <laughs> Like the, Anyways, the floppy nuts. I you know Ryan bought me one last year or year before. And anyways, I I gave it to somebody. So this one here, while we were there, we we're just walking around, and she was like, "You know what? I'll be right back. I'll be right." And back. she went and bought me bought me a Bible. Yeah. And y'all, these aren't cheap. So yeah. that was a big seed that sister. That said. was a big seed. Can I read what she wrote? This is very sweet. Y'all don't cry. They're this is what like, Sister wrote in the Bible. But it's she, not that big of me. <laughs> she wrote, there will be many messages that come out of this word. I am so blessed to be around to hear them. I love you. What, what's my favorite and scripture? And her favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Do you guys know what that is? Lean not on your own understanding. I love it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean How not. sweet is that? All your ways acknowledge him. He directs you. It's just so plain and simple, that scripture. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge me, I direct you. Mm -hmm. That's all yeah. I have to say. Yep. I'm like, yes, sir, will do. So, and actually, the one I have when Pastor Rodney was here, like right after my dad passed, he came and did that 300 city tour and he came to the church mm -hmm. and he, someone got up and advertised him and he had one in his hand and he goes, Oh, you don't have one? No, you go, she doesn't have one. Oh, I did. That's right. <laughs> because goes, we had already, Ryan and I had one, and he was <clears> looking <throat> at our row, and he was like, you guys already have one? And I was like, she doesn't have one. Because so. <laughs> well, so he go. gave her. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was like, Pastor Rodney gave me that Bible. Yeah, you can't say that. But he gave it to no, me. No, I'm not. This this color, though. Is... I made her write my name in it so that I can't you, you can't I don't have it. to sew it. <laughs> Scribble it out. <laughs> White out. Right. Uh, no, but I love that navy uh, color. And too, it's pretty. And it's funny because Oh, you know what? Made... Elder Barbara asked, where's my Bible cover? You know what? Oh, oh no. no. Lyric, you asked too. Somebody else asked. Was it Elder Barbara that said, where's the Bible cover? The, the one you were using? Oh, no. It was Lyric that asked. Yeah, remember when I had that big... You called me a nerd because I had well, a Bible you, cover. You told me to get one, and it was the ugliest thing. <laughs> you was... bought one on, yeah, you bought one that was like neon orange. But online it looked so cool. Was it like, was Whoa! so pretty. This and will it stand came out. in, and it was like, oh God, it was you could see it from space. It is shoved <laughs> into some drawer. I was like, you know what, I'm not going to, I was, because I was going to cover it. I didn't want to cover this one. I, I, my whole perspective of Bible covers has changed. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? If it I gets can't. Raggedy, then it gets it does. If your Bible gets raggedy and coffee it's and water spills testament. on it, it means it's it's been used. Now it's water might be worn. means that you've been setting stuff on it. It's on your uh, well, side table at home. But um, I was real nervous that I got the Spanish translation. <laughs> <laughs> I would have used it. I would have learned she Spanish. Would have. I'd been like, I want to give this to you, and it's like, Hola, Jesus loves you. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. And that's pretty much all I know. What's the word for fuego? Fuego, fuego, fuego. <laughs> you guys know what that means? Fire. And it means uh, fire, fire. Corazón Jesús loves you. <laughs> I don't know. Corazón is heart, right? Corazón, not cortisone. That's a cream. Corazón cream. Cortisón. No, co co corazón. Uh, hola, soy Dora. Is the yep. front is on the front page. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, go out and get one of these bad boys. Well, yes, do that. Save your ducats. Yeah. Anyways, I'm very excited. I've been, 
I, I've only been reading this because I don't, I have to, you know, I don't like when my pages stick together. I don't like a, a new Bible feel. Mm-hmm. I like once it's worn. So mm-hmm. you have to just use it. Mm-hmm. I may have to sprinkle a little water on there, you know, and do this to the pages to get them to. And this is the Amplified. I noticed he had two. He had a Spanish Bible, Amplified, and King James. I'm glad I didn't grab that one either. Uh, you know King what? James I probably would have had an easier time reading the Spanish than the King James. Yeah, I like New King James. Is uh, cool. My dad used to give the New King out, so I have a lot of, well, this yeah. one here. Mm-hmm. I've worn this one in a little bit more. I, I grabbed this one. Rosa asked if we want to join the Spanish Harvest. Absolutely. Sure. 100%. You know what, Rosa? I'll shadow you. Funny story. I took three years of Spanish in high school, and I am not fluent at all. I can catch a word here and there, but I mm-hmm. took French. Like cuidado means I am careful. Fluent. What else is another me. word? Um, anyways. I say but shit him. You know what? Um, you don't what is it? You don't use it, you lose it. You, you know lost what? it. That's any language. That's even in tongues. You, you don't use English. it, you lose it. <laughs> anyways. You right? lose your tongues. No, you don't lose your tongues. Mm. But you sharpen your tongue and increase your syllables. You know, I know what syllables mean. More words. I don't think so. You increase your syllables the more you pray. You start with like one and then you as you said, go. You said, I know what syllables bro, means. Bro, bro, means bro. more words. It does. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, you get more words once you increase your syllables. I mean, what does that mean? What is a syllable? Syllable. A, a word? An, a is letter? like of a word. Mm-hmm. So like increase. how many syllables are in the word? Syllable. Three. Syllable. More letters, not more words. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you increase your prayer language the more you pray. Huh. Do y'all know how to roll your R? <laughs> not correctly. <sighs> no. Rosa. Huh. Oh, well, I might have been wrong there. Yeah, you were wrong. That's all right. You know what? I don't know what it means to have more words. You were wrong. You were wrong. I don't know how to roll my R's lyric. Like, or like Roy Orbison. I did it. You remember? Do you know Roy Orbison? Oh, you don't. Name rings the bell. Someone old on here knows it. Come on, season folks. He does that. Uh, he did that one. Who's often. Roy? Or, anyways, let's get into it. It's already 11 o'clock. I'll tell you later. 10.55. All right, y'all. So, y'all don't hate me. Y'all don't hate me. I'm bringing a, I'm bringing a, a tough word today. But it's a good word. Y'all, I don't bring y'all any words that the Lord has not given me or uh, things that he's had to work on me on. So, y'all don't hate on me. Y'all don't hate on me. I'm just bringing a word that was in my heart. This is for you, too. It's going to help you. Hey, you know what? I was listening to a message today about offense. Good. That's not what we're talking about Well, no, I know. But, you know, they could get offended if they don't like your word. Oh, they could. It coincides together. It's true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Uh Only the lonely. Yep. I agree. I don't know what that means. Oh. But I agree. Only the lonely. Ask, ask. Sometimes when you're lonely. Mm -hmm. I concur. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. So today I want to talk about materialism. Ooh. Y'all don't hate. Y'all don't hate. You open your heart and receive. Doesn't mean the Lord can't bless you, but it's right. Yeah, well, let me get into it. All I'll get right, into you it. get into that. I'm going to get into it. So Roy. I want to talk about materialism today. Um, and here, listen, y'all, I don't know what's wrong with my microphone. I don't know. Is the sound okay? I probably should have asked that 20 minutes ago when we started. <laughs> Not mm-hmm. wait. Maybe it's okay they didn't hear us at <laughs> the beginning. Okay, good. Oh, gosh. Are these real strong? Should I back off? What? Yeah, you, you back off because mm. I'm feeling a little jittery. Probably didn't too. help that I just chugged the last little bit. No, that's all right. I'm, uh, hmm. It's all right. Let's get into it. All right, so I want to talk about materialism. First of all, a lot of people think that materialism is you you're like you shop at Neiman's and you have five Chanel bags and 25 Louis Vuittons and uh, materialism is isn't just that it also means that you uh, like stuff and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's 
you know, like real pricey. Real pricey. It could be anything. Like materialism is you hoard your stuff. You like stuff. Um, doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's expensive. Now, is that the, you know, Webster's definition of material? No, I'm giving you my own opinion of what material. Well, it's kind of like a syllable thing. You I know what? You materialism know. is the spirit of the world. Mm -hmm. The world says, uh, save, hoard, keep all your things. Um, you know, so the spirit of the world is, you know, keep, be stingy, be greedy, get attain as much as you can. Um, so let's get into the word. Let's go to First John. 2, 15 through 17. Y'all, and Ooh, I, that I is pray that you guys hear this and catch it with your spirit. True. Because in this house, we are givers. And I don't just mean tithes and offerings. I mean we live a life of giving. I don't have an attachment to anything the Lord places in my hands. But you know what? That didn't happen by accident. That just That didn't just happen. I had to step out. And let the Lord work that out of me. And nothing he places in my hands, my hands stay like this. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's a $2 pair of earrings or a $2,000 handbag. I don't, I don't hoard and I don't hang on to it. And I realize anything he places in my hands, is, is he, he's allowed to use it for his, for, to love on people. Or, or whatever, to use it as a tool. You have to understand, anything the Lord places in our hands, doesn't matter what it is. It is to be used as a resource. Yes, he wants to enjoy, he wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor and our hard work, and he wants us to have nice things and he wants us to be blessed. He's not he doesn't want us to be poor and, you know, live a life of martyrdom where we're like, Oh, I don't have anything because I love the Lord so much and I'm so holy and self righteous that I don't need material mm -hmm. things. So I wear these sack cloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. To prove my love to the... No. Mm -mm. No, no, no. No. He wants us to have no. nice things, and he wants us to be blessed, but uh, it is such a fine line of understanding. He wants you to enjoy um, this life, and he wants to bless us, but you can't be obsessed with it, and you can't hoard, and you can't hang on to everything like it's the only thing he's ever going to bless you with. Or guess what? It will be the only thing he blesses you with. So, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, let's go. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, uh, love for the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, craving for sensual gratification and the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind and the pride of life, Assurance in one's own resources or instability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world itself. And the world passes away and disappears, and with it the forbidden cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it. <clears throat> but he who does the will of God and carries out his purposes in his life abides and remains forever. What you do for the kingdom will last what you do for the worldly things it does not it it perishes anything of the world perishes anything done for the kingdom is eternal it's forever mm -hmm. um so all of these um you know material things they're that's it they're just things to enjoy here on earth and the lord wants to use those things in our life to bless other people and to love on people um you know and so I'm, let me get through my notes. So we can't have a love for the things of the world. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I only want to have what the Lord wants me to have or what he knows I can handle and what my character is ready for. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me on that? There are things that the Lord will not bless you with if your character is not developed enough to handle it. He's not going to place something in your hands of material possession or a million dollars or whatever it is, he's not going to place that in your hands until your character is developed enough to handle it or he knows it'll crush you. It will crush you. It will ruin you. You have to be ready for it. So what are you doing to prepare yourself for that? You need to make sure you are not hanging on to material things and they have a hold on your heart. 
Um, I, in the last two years, the Lord has really dealt with me on this. So, um, to, and I'll, I'll give an example. Um, so two years, I think it was two years ago, maybe a year ago, somebody blessed me with a $2,000 handbag. Okay, y'all, I had never owned a handbag that was worth more than maybe $200, 250 was like the most expensive. And that, that to me was like, that was my $1,000 handbag, was that $200 bag. I thought, oh, my gosh, this is good. You know, and so somebody blessed me with that. And, you know, the word that came was like the Lord sees you, and he's rewarding your obedience to obeying him and following his perfect will for your life, for your family's life, blah, 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 all of the things. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing, blah, blah, blah. So fast forward, um, you know, I felt in my, it was during a time of prayer and fasting, and I felt the Lord um, nudging me to give a seed during that time of prayer and fasting of honor. And I was like, okay, Lord, well, Ryan does all the finances. What, what am I, you know, what am I going to give? I don't, he has, you know, he's, mm-hmm. he's already sown and he sows over and above. And so, and the Lord, and I just felt in my spirit, give your best offering. I'm like, well, what does that mean? And then immediately that $2,000 handbag came to mind. And, of course, in that moment, I didn't argue with, with – I was arguing with myself, not the Lord, because it was a test of my obedience. Am I going to let these material things have a hold on me? Or – or am I going to have my hands like this and say, Lord, whatever you place in my hands, use it. Use it. I will be used as a vessel. This flows freely. I will receive when someone blesses me, but then I will pour out when you tell mm-hmm. me to pour out. And that is the ebb and flow of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. We give, we receive. We give, we, re- we receive. And you have to stay in that. You can't ever clog yourself up with material things to where you're constantly just hanging tight because you think that that's the last nice thing you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. No, the Lord places those things in our hands to bless us, but then he wants to see and test our obedience that are are these things going to have a hold on you? Are they going to crush you and ruin you? Then I can't use you for the kingdom because that's the spirit of the world. Spirit of the world is hoard. Let me get as much stuff as I can because this is it. So let me just hoard it. Anyways, so what did I do? I said, okay, Lord, my best offering right now is that handbag. And I said, okay. And I, I sewed it. I gave it. And I, I wrote a letter. I said, this is a seed of honor. I gave it. And that person was, was just, wow, oh, my gosh, thank you so much, and blah, blah, blah. Fast forward. So six months later, that person came back to me, and it was during Ankit. And he had preached, I think, on um, Abraham. And when Abraham, you know, was being obedient to the Lord to take take Isaac up and, you know, mm-hmm. was going to kill him and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, gave that story of obedience. <clears throat> and then, of course, the Lord was, you know, he provided another, what was it, a sheep, lamb, mm-hmm. whatever lamb, it was. It got stuck in the a bushes. Ram. ram, that's what it was, a ram. Sheep, lamb, he ram. provided, but... Abraham was not hesitant in his obedience. Anyways, that was the message. Well, that person came to me and said, listen, I believe you sewing that bag was the Lord um, testing your obedience to see what he could trust you with. Mm -hmm. And you passed. And so she gave, that person gave it back. Okay. So I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Praise God. All right. So I have the bag and I, I carried it some more and I enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, you know. Thank you, Lord. So fast forward to another year. Uh, a guest minister came through, and we're in the back, and she said, she gave me a word from the Lord, which was a very intimate word that I knew it was from the Lord because she said things that I had only said and prayed to the Lord, and she confirmed that word, and she said, let this be a sign. The, she said, I want to sew into your life. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. She's about to write a huge check to the church, yeah. and we could put it <laughs> towards what we're Praise doing. I was like, ooh, <clears throat> that's not what she did. She said, the, let this be a sign to you that you've gone to the next level in, in anointing or something else. And then she said something very personal that was between me and the Lord. I hadn't prayed 
No, I didn't even tell Ryan this. Anyways, she, so I thought, oh, she's going to, she's going to write the check, uh, write the check in church. <laughs> write the write church, the church. A, check. a check. And she did not do that. She had this beautiful Chanel bag. She literally emptied it out on the, she emptied her Chanel bag out and handed it to me. And I was like, oh, uh, you remember that? I, at first I cried, not because, you know, not because, it, I mean, obviously, I mean, yeah, it's a Chanel bag. I've never owned anything that nice. But because the word that she spoke, I knew it was from the Lord, and that was the Lord showing me, I will always bless your obedience. That's good. I'll mm-hmm. always bless your obedience. And so fast forward to, you know, we went to the ladies' conference. So we went. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't go, I knew, so Ryan and I have been sowing seed. We always sow seed to, um, the river because that's our covering. So we, we sow all the time to the river. So I really didn't feel led to go down with an, I didn't, you know, I didn't ask him, Hey, can you, what can I give? You know, blah, 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 you know? Um, but on the airplane, I just quietly said, Lord, if you want me to sow, uh, you know, give me seed. And I'll sew while I'm there. You just, you tell me what to do and I'll, you know, do it. And so, you know, I didn't think anything of it. So we get there and the first night, and I had brought that same Louis Vuitton bag with me um, that, you know, I had already sewn, I'd already sewn once. I'm like, I can't give it away. It keeps coming back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I saw this older lady that she's a pastor in Houston, so and she is the sweetest. Every time we see her, in fact, the first conference, ladies' conference we went to, she, she, she just she looked me in the eye, and she was very sweet. And she, I forgot what she said. She spoke a word to me, and it was a very short word, but it was very sweet. But then the next year we went, she, I think she had a word for your mom. It was oh, really sweet. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. very encouraging. Anyways, I just love her. <clears throat> don't even I don't even know her name. That's that's real sad. I don't know her name, but we see her every year at the ladies' she's conference. Sweet, though. Anyways, immediately it bubbled up out of me that I was gonna give her that bag. And I thought, this lady's been a pastor forever. She's probably got like twenty Louis Vuittons, Lord. She's gonna think I'm a weirdo. I'm giving her my used you know, and I don't even, you know, and that ba- that Louis Vuitton is it's very nice. Like, I, it's in good condition. I mean, I don't tear it up. And so I was like, Lord, she's going to think I'm a weirdo. She didn't even know me. And I'm like, Here, here's my used bag. <laughs> Anyways, I hesitated. I didn't even tell this one. She didn't even know. Like, I didn't tell her that I was like. You told me the day before. I told you. The like, night before. Like, before we went to service, that I yeah, was right, like, because I knew you would notice, like, why do you have like, that bag? Where'd your bag go? Where's your purse? <laughs> like, Could you leave it at the hotel? Right. Yeah, I would have. Anyway, so I, after, <clears throat> well, let me say, during service, um, I, before that, actually, sorry, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry, y'all, I'm trying to get the story right. So, I knew I was going to sew it to her the minute I saw her that first night. The next day, I prayed that morning, and I was like, Lord, this is so awkward. When am I going to do this? I can't do it on the front row in the middle of service. Everyone's staring at me like, Lord, you're going to have to, like, confirm that I need to sow this Mm -hmm, to her. mm -hmm. And anyway, so I told the Lord, just let me, you know, run into her um, somewhere tonight, and I'll tell her that I have something to give her tomorrow. Sure enough. During offering, we got up, went to, went to the bathroom. Well, she was still sitting. Anyways, so we go to the bathroom. I come out of the stall. She's coming out at the same time. And I was like, I'll be there. dang it, Lord. Dang it, Lord. <laughs> I got to get my back. Getting off the can. And Anyways, I saw her, and I, I hugged her, and I said, hey, will you be here tomorrow night? I have something for you. And she, you know, she kind of looked at me. Oh, sure. And she's, I think she's Australian. Yeah. Uh, she's Australian. She might be your aunt. She could be. <laughs> <laughs> she could be. Uh, she's Australian. Yeah, she's she Australian. Has a, she's she, so sweet. She's so sweet. And yeah, so I was I like, oh, oh, sure. I appreciate um, Anyway, so I, <clears throat> that I, the Lord confirmed it. And she said, oh, sure, you know, and blah, blah, blah. I'll be here tomorrow. So anyways, next night, I thought, Lord, she's going to think I'm a weirdo. She was probably thinking I'm going to give her cash. I don't have cash to oh. give her. <laughs> giving her a bag. Y'all, this is the sweetest thing. 
So after service, I made a beeline. And at first I was embarrassed. I didn't have a bag to put it in. I literally had my airport snack bag, y'all. It was in a Hudson's oh, bag that I had had my airport snacks in. And I brought, I, you know, I walked it over there. I was a little bit embarrassed, but I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm so this to this lady. I'm being obedient. Anyways, so I hand her the bag and she, she kind of just opens it a little bit. And then the tears, the tears. And I was like, and I was like, I'm sorry. You think I'm a weirdo? She was like, no, 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 that's not it. And she started, you know, then she proceeded to say, um, I've all, it's always been a heart's desire to have one of these bags and I've never purchased one for myself. And I was like, Lord, look at that. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is the Lord? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that blessed her. Well, seeing that, that blessed me. Just doing it blessed me. And, you know, and then someone handed me $100 cash. And I was like, and all of this because I prayed for seed to sow. Mm -hmm. I prayed for seed to sow. And the Lord said, he gave me seed to sow. So the next morning, um, uh, the offering message was amazing. Uh, It was, what's that lady's name? Uh, I can't remember. God, we're rough on the names. Well, we're not good with names. She's awesome. She's on staff. Anyway, there, yeah, she, her message was amazing, and it was. Anyways, so I, I, yeah, someone gave me a hundred dollars, and I sewed it, and I was like, "Thank you, Lord." Like He gives seed to the sower. Anyway, so I said all that to say, uh, the Lord blesses His people through other people. You need to let the Lord use you as a vessel. We're to be vessels, not containers. You know what I mean? Like a container just holds stuff, but we need to be able to just, it just, that's probably not a good analogy. Because uh, a vessel is, I don't know, you need to be a strainer, right? Because the water can pour through. Yeah, yeah, a strainer. Maybe that's not the right word. Well, Y'all know it, what it I makes mean. makes sense. Be a vessel. You don't want to just be a taker and a hoarder. Like when someone blesses you with something, uh, you know, you just, hoard everything like you know you we're, we're to be vessels you, you you give you receive you give you receive and you don't need to be in the other ditch either don't be in the ditch of you are a martyr and you just give, you everything, give everything away you know. like yeah. and you know that the lord doesn't want that either he wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor but not be obsessed with it and right mm-hmm. now the culture we live in the world that we live in a is a funnel okay there you go there you go funnel jen thank you Funnel. That's what we need to be. We are a funnel. The Lord uses us. So you want materialism broken off your life. That is the spirit of the world is materialism. Is get, get, get. Uh, You know. And the Lord's way. So, and then I wanted to say this to y'all. Pastor Rodney has always said, when everything means nothing to you, I'll give you everything. Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke that to him. When everything means nothing to you, I'll give you everything. Um, let's go over to Proverbs 10 and 22. Um, so we're to be vessels, you guys. Allow the Lord to use you. And, you know, I want to get through all my notes because it's so good. Um, it is 10, 11, 16. We're good. We're good? Yep. Okay. Uh, the blessing of the Lord, it makes truly rich and he has no sorrow with it. Neither does toiling increase it. So when the Lord blesses you, it has no sorrow to it. So when you work for everything you have and that your main goal in life is to make as much money as you can and gain as much, you know, material things as you can, uh, you're going to be worn out, frazzled, and the Lord can't use you. So when the Lord blesses you, there's no sorrow attached to it, meaning you're not working round the clock, no rest, just to attain things in life. No, when the Lord blesses you, it makes you rich Mm -hmm. in every area. Mm. Not just in whatever. And let me further say this, y'all. I know you're like, oh, you sewed a $2,000 handbag. I sew everything. If the Lord tells me to give a $5 pair of earrings that I really like, that my heart is like, oh my gosh, I love this, you know, I I don't hesitate. 
I don't think, oh, well, it's only $6. No one's going to want these. Why would somebody want to sit? No. If the Lord tells me to give it, I don't care how much it is, I give it. It doesn't matter what it is. And especially the season that we're in, Ryan is, um, he does all the giving. I don't have an emotional attachment. Um, to If someone puts, here, here's where my brain is and where my heart. When someone puts cash in my hand, there are times where I'm like, I'm not supposed to do this. Yeah. In my head, I'm like, okay, do I grocery shop? Do I buy that bracelet that I want? Do I pay a bill with it? You know, in my head, I'm like, it overwhelms me. And I don't, I don't have an emotional attachment to cash. So cash is not hard for me to give. Uh, what is hard, not hard for me to give, but <clears throat> what um, the things that I like. I, you know, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Am I making sense? Mm-hmm. Like cash is not hard for me to give. But for Ryan, Ryan, you know, sowing cash and sowing into the kingdom, um, for him, you know, cash is in money and our, you know, our, you know, that's what he sows. That's what he, well, yeah. but when he sows, I don't, I don't think, oh my gosh, you know, anyways, I'm rambling. I'm trying to make a point, but it's not. No, I, I get it. You get You're it. landing. Am I landing? landing okay. a well, rambling a little bit. But, all right, so let's go to um, Matthew 6.33. Because I want to get to this other part, too, because this is going to really help y'all. I know y'all are probably hoping for a Good Friday message, but this, I felt, was more important. Not more important, I'm sorry. This was what was on my heart that the Lord wanted me to speak on. So, I want to share this with y'all. Um, but seek, aim at, and strive after first of all his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given you besides. So do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow. So seek first the kingdom of God, and he he adds everything else. <clears throat> so, uh, and this was out of... Um, Pastor Jonathan's book, Financial Overflow, I wanted to read to y'all. Three ways you can allow the grace that breaks materialism to flow in your life. Okay, y'all? Write these down. Uh, Number one, immerse yourself in human need. Number two, immerse yourself in the cause of reaching the lost. Number three, give. Live a life of giving, not just cash and money and those things, but give what your heart is attached to. Give, mm-hmm. give what you enjoy. Um, cause yeah, let me get to that. Because what's the scripture about David? Oh yeah, First uh, Chronicles twenty one twenty four, where um, David said he he refused to give God an offering that doesn't cost him anything. So when you give something that your heart is attached to or that, you know what I mean? Not not necessarily is like obsessive or whatever. You know what I mean? Something that you're like, oh, you know, I really like that. Um, God honors that. He honors that. When you give something that means nothing to you, your heart's not in it. It's not in it as much as when you give something that your heart is attached to. Um, so remember that. God wants an offering that costs us something. And I don't mean mon- not just monetarily, but something that is a little bit more difficult for you to give. He wants to take us to a, 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 an, a other levels, but it's always going to come through him testing our obedience. That's the only way you go to another level in the Lord. No matter what it is, He will. there will come a test of your obedience to do what he's asked you to do. And you either pass it or... You circle back around until you're ready for it. But, and it's no different with financial things. Like he will not, he will not bless you over what you're ready for and what your character character can handle. So remember that. Um, so immerse yourself in human need, immerse yourself in the cause for reaching the lost and give. Um, this is what I wanted to read to y'all because this is rampant right now. Um, out of, uh, Pastor Jonathan's book, Financial <clears throat> Overflow. Um, uh, if you, uh, this is what I want to read to y'all. 
On the other hand, if you immerse yourself in the materialistic celebrity culture, you're going to become materialistic. Okay, y'all. I want to I want to touch on this. You'll only care about things that don't matter. Proverbs 4:23 says, "Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life." If what you look at controls the desires of your heart, then don't look at luxury magazines. It will create a desire for those material goods. There's nothing wrong with wanting nice things, mm -hmm. but if you're constantly uh, following celebrities for um, or influencers, y'all, I'm not kidding Ooh, you. That's a big one. How many influencers? Take inventory on how many celebrities and how many influencers you follow on your social media. It affects what you desire. I can assure you of that because those things are designed for that. You put it in the perspective. These people get paid to talk you into buying things, mm -hmm. and we're watching it. I'm not kidding you. I will watch an, an, an influencer, and she'll be talking about something, and I'll be like, oh, I need that. I need that. Uh -huh. You know how many things I have gone and bought because I saw someone and an influencer, and I'm like, she really uses that. That must mean it's a really good product, so I'm going to go and buy it. It's terrible. It's, that is yeah, the I've spirit of the world. What you feed on is what your heart will start to desire. So if you're feeding on that celebrity culture and the, you follow all these influencers, <clears throat> you're going to start to desire those things more than you desire advancing the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So watch what you're watching, y'all. Seriously. Go and clean up your social media. Unfollow celebrities. Unfollow influencers. I'm just telling you, just watch. Give yourself, do a little tester. Do like a 30-day tester of cleaning up your, um, your social media and see how your heart changes. Um, and listen, I like style. I love to, to dress nice, and I like nice things, and I, I, I enjoy you know, style and fashion and all of those things. But it doesn't consume me. It does not consume me. I like helping others style themselves. I, I find enjoyment out of that, helping people, um, you know, dress nice. And dress nice on a budget. You don't got to shop at Neiman's, you know, to look nice when you come to church. You don't. I shop. If I see something I like, I don't care where it's at. I don't care what the brand is. I just, you know, piece it together, you know? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't, you know, but they're just things. They're just things to enjoy, and that's it. I don't know. Don't we float up into the sky naked anyway? That's a good question that I, I don't that have stuff goes, the answer to. Yeah, it's I, um, yeah, I don't know. So you can't break materialism if you're surrounding yourself with things that feed materialism. Break materialism by immersing yourself in human need. On social media, oh, that's never mind. I'm not going to read into that. Um, immerse yourself in the cause for reaching the lost. When you make giving your highest priority, then money begins to flow like tap water. So you want to be prosperous in the Lord, you become yeah. a vessel. You give, and you start where you're at. He won't take you to the next level until you start where you're at and you start giving where you're at. You pray, Lord, break materialism off of me. Use me as a vessel and use me where I'm at and I will be obedient. Whatever you place in my hands, I will always give back to you mm -hmm. and always be mm -hmm. ready to be obedient no matter what it is. If it's a million dollars, if it's a thousand dollars, if it's a ten dollar pair of earrings or a $3,000 handbag, Lord, if you tell me to give it, I will give it. We always have to keep ourselves in that flow. Our hands yeah. always have to be like this. You cannot have a grip on anything. Um, so what else I got? Um, oh, let me say this too. If most of your, so a lot of us, you know, you have your prayer list and you have the things you believe in God for. And some people make, what are those? things called the vision board oh yeah which is uh, no that's a great thing yeah. but but yes i know what you're talking about you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. so if most of your heart's desires and things you're praying and believing god for are monetarial things material things um i urge you to pray and ask the lord to change your heart's desires mm -hmm. to his desires there's nothing wrong with wanting nice things but if that's all that's on your vision, vision board mm -hmm. is material things, oh, Lord, I want a house. and I want, Why, though? 
Why mm-hmm. do you want those things? We should desire those things mm-hmm. to help others, mm-hmm. to further the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, you Listen, you can have nice things and be a giver. Yeah. You can, we have to be a vessel. Those things cannot have a hold on us. Um, if those things define you and give you self-worth, oosh, that's also a dangerous place to be. Oh, yeah. If carrying a nice handbag is what uh, brings you self-worth, there's an issue. There's something in your heart that mm-hmm. the Lord needs to tweak. Mm-hmm. And so it's all about letting the Holy Spirit put his finger on things inside of you. Mm-hmm. And so materialism is a, it's a, it's a tricky beast. Um, God wants to bless and prosper us, but he also loves us too much to bless us with material things beyond what our character is ready for, or it will ruin us. It will crush. He loves us too much. He's not going to, he's not going to bless us beyond what our character can handle. Um, he has to test our hearts in, in our giving before he takes us to another level to see if we're ready. Know that. He will always test you in your giving before you'll be like, it's in levels. He has to know. Sorry. No. <laughs> uh, so let me, we're about to have to wrap this up, but um, let me, on your own time, go and read 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 8. And then uh, let me say this to you. The devil steals, man hoards, God gives. Don't forget that. That's a good one. That's very good. That That's not mine. I can't take credit for that. That's you Pastor did. Jonathan. I stole yes, that. Yes, credit to you, Pastor Jonathan. Uh, the grace to be a giver, to live a life of generosity, does not just happen. It takes practice. You have to step out and stretch yourself in that area. I urge you, try taking your most valuable thing to you. you everybody has something that their heart is attached to. Um, and give it. Show the Lord nothing he places in your hands will have a grip on you. Mm-hmm. So ask yourself, what is that? What, what in my life would be hard for me to give? No matter what it is. No matter what it is, whether it's money, a handbag, a watch, a pair of earrings, a pair of shoes, you know, I encourage you, you know, show the Lord that nothing, material things mean nothing to you Mm -hmm. and that you are just a vessel for him to use. And you watch, you will go to another level. You will go to another level. Um, So that's really all I wanted to share with y'all today. That was what was on my heart. I think a lot of it has to do with where we're at as a church. We cannot have materialism uh, have a hold on anybody. We're furthering the kingdom. It is. We are full speed ahead, and the Lord's about to bless our church. You want to know why? Because we're focused on souls. Yeah. He's going to begin to bring the finances needed to go after the harvest in a greater measure. But we have to be able to handle it. We have to be good stewards of what the Lord blesses us with. So that is for all of us, starting with Ryan and I all the way down. We all have to be vessels. And materialism cannot, we cannot have a spirit of the world on us. Materialism is a beast. He wants us to prosper. Yes, the Lord does not want us to be poor. He wants us to prosper and live prosperously. But not just for the sake of being prosperous. It's to further the kingdom of God. We can reach the world with greater resources we have. Um, but if, if, if the Lord blesses us with greater resources and we're not good stewards, we can't do what he needs us to do. So we have to be good stewards. We have to give our tithe. We have to give our offerings. And we have to give when he tells us to give no matter what it is. Yeah. And we have to live a life of generosity. That is what the Word of God says. We tithe. We give offerings. Uh, we're obedient in everything he places in our hands. We are to be good stewards. So that's all I got today. I love y'all. Be a good steward. Be a good steward. And um, be ready for Sunday, y'all. Be praying up. Get yourself stirred and prayed up and, and ready. Because it is full speed ahead here at Church in the City. And you either hop on a train or you, you get your, you're going to be, know. you'll get left behind. <laughs> No man left behind. No man left behind. I love you guys. Happy Good Friday. See you Sunday. See you Sunday. Deuces.